Yeah, we'll talk about eigenvalues and eigenvectors. This little equation here, this AK equals lambda K, that's called the eigenvalue problem. You're given this square matrix A. We want to find the Ks and the lambdas that make this a true statement. And the Ks can't just be zero. You can see if I just set K equal to a zero matrix or a zero vector. Um, and K, by the way, is if A is N by N, K is N by one. So like a column matrix or a column vector. And lambda is just a number. Uh, it actually could be a complex number. We'll get into that later, but you can see if I just always set K equal to an all zero vector, this will be true. But the problem is when K is not zero, what lambdas and what Ks make this a true state? Well, that's the eigenvalue problem. And the eigenvalues and eigenvectors are then properties of the A matrix. So let's do a little matrix arithmetic here, our matrix algebra. Here's, here's the starting equation. And I can always insert an identity matrix here, bring it all over to one side. And this have, inserting that identity matrix allows me to do this arithmetic. So I can gather up the like terms A minus lambda I, where I is the same size as A. If you look at this, A is a column vector, remember. This is just like when we solve systems of equations, algebraic equations. The right side is zero. Uh, actually, that should be a vector. I should hold that zero. Um, and when it was a homogeneous equation, there was two possibilities. You'll always get a consistent system. You'll always get either exactly one solution or an infinite number of solutions. If it's exactly one, it's the trivial solution, which means zero. So I can, I can make this true by K being zero, but we reject that in the eigenvalue problem. So to make sure this doesn't just have the trivial solution, I need this guy's determinant, this whole thing here, a minus lambda i, I need it to be zero. If it's not zero, it would have exactly one solution, remember? Um, and that would be the trivial solution. And we don't want the trivial solution. So we want the determinant to be zero. And so this is then called the characteristic equation. And it's how we find the eigenvalues, the lambdas. The lambdas are called the eigenvalues. The Ks are called the eigenvectors. And here's how we find the eigenvalues. Let's do an example. See, so here's the A. What does it mean to subtract off lambda I? That just means subtract off lambda off every term of, of the diagonals. So here, two minus lambda, one minus lambda are the diagonal terms. All the off diagonal terms stay the same. So find its uh, determinant, top left, times bottom right, minus the product of these guys. Two minus lambda, one minus lambda, minus two. This leads to a quadratic equation. In this case, it's lambda squared minus three lambda, which is easily factored. And the roots or the solving lambdas are zero and three. There are our eigenvalues. Zero and three. It doesn't matter how we order them, but we do call them two different distinct eigenvalues. Um, if it's a if A is triangular, then you don't need to do a lot of work. The, uh, the eigenvalues are just the values of the diagonal terms. So I don't have to do all this algebra. 
Um, in this case, three, two, and one are all different from each other. Those are called distinct eigenvalues. Here's another triangular case, but we have three, two, and two. You still call that three eigenvalues, but one of them is repeated, are repeated eigenvalues. So you don't just say it, it only has two eigenvalues. If it's n by n, it's going to have n eigenvalues. Some might be repeated. If you're asked for the eigenvalues, you should indicate all of them somehow. If you were in my class and you just said three and two here, not full credit. The two is repeated, and that's important. We'll, we'll get to that later. Um, so that's finding eigenvalues uh, that leads to finding the roots of an equation. You solve the characteristic equations, find the roots of your eigenvalues. How do you find the eigenvectors? Well, once you have the eigenvalues, you're solving this equation. And remember, going back just a couple of charts ago, if we get a non-zero K here, you know, if we solve this, we're going to get an infinite number of solutions. So the Ks are not going to be unique. Uh, we're going to get an infinite number of Ks. Well, let's see what happens here. We just solve for the eigenvalues. Now let's see what happens when we solve for the eigenvectors. Solve them at the time. So for the zero eigenvalue, This is what we're solving for. A minus the lambdas, in this case, the lambda is zero, so we just get the same thing back, two, one, two, one. Here is the augmented matrix. We always have zeros here because it's a homogeneous equation. And what does this mean? Two times whatever the first variable is plus the second variable equals zero. Bottom line is the same equation. And if, if you did all your arithmetic right up to here, uh, these two equations should be equivalent results. What does this mean? 2K1 plus K2 equals zero. Now I'm saying big K, the matrix K has these two elements, little case of one and little case of two. This says little case of two is minus two case of one. Remember, it's not unique. So I get an infinite number of answers. Um, here's one, I'll say K1 is one and K2 is minus two. I'm gonna switch the sign. Are any multiple, any of these would be legitimate eigenvectors. They're not linearly independent of each other. In fact, they're scalar multiples of each other. Um, let's do the second eigenvalue, which is three. Here I'm going to subtract three off the main diagonals. We'll end up with this augmented matrix. If I use the top row, this means minus K1 plus K2 equals zero. I could use the bottom row, but it's going to result in this equivalent relationship if I didn't, if I hadn't made any arithmetic mistakes up to here. Uh, in fact, here's a place to to look for, did you make a mistake? Like maybe you, maybe your eigenvalues weren't. Um, if something screwed up here, that's an indication you might've got screwed up. Another thing that indicates you screwed up somewhere along the line is if you get an answer of K being all zeros, it can't be all zero. If you get an answer of all zeros, you did something wrong somewhere previous. So here's the relationship, and it's satisfied by just both of them being one. Uh, generally, we like, at least I like the whole numbers. Um, it could have been anything. It could have been half and minus one. Uh, you know, I like to avoid fractions. So that's how you find it here. If you just have a two by two case, there's kind of an algebraic trick, shortcut. 
satisfy yourself of this arithmetic. Go, go through, say this is your generic matrix and uh, you want to find the lambdas or the k's. Well, excuse me, this is the result after subtracting off the lambdas. It's like this guy here. This is what you have. You could just say the vector is, is A12 over negative A11. Right guy on top, left guy on bottom, and switch one of their You could put the negative sign on either top or bottom. And you could do the same thing with the bottom. You, I could have said it's A22 on top and negative A21 on bottom. Um, I'm just giving you this as a time-saving tip, and I encourage you to do the little bit of algebra to show that, but you'd rather not do this kind of algebra every time you do it. Two by two. When we get into three by threes, and I'll save this for another video, um, we're gonna be stuck doing some Gaussian elimination, and uh, I'll save that for another video. Um, I'll stop that for now. This is going to come in. I'll do the three by three stuff in a separate video because it's going to lead to some subtle. Uh, in fact, it's one of the few nuances in this whole subject of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And I want to take my time and go over that slowly with feeling. 